Hello everybody, my name is Nick with Scog and Dickie. Welcome back to our weekly tech video segment. We are back, first one of 2021. We're glad you stuck with us. Today's technical video is gonna be covering HP tuners. And of course, the kits that we sell with them that include a, a wideband sensor, maybe some of our tuning school booklets. And really what we're doing this for is to answer some questions. This is all pretty daunting. And I bet the reason you're watching this video is because you tried to read up on it, maybe read some forum posts, watch some videos yourself, and your, your head is swimming. You just can't really seem to grasp this. So what we're gonna do is kind of the basics just to explain, not tuning itself, but what we offer in the software and see if we can kind of get this a little bit more on a level playing field so you can understand it. Now, this, is HP tuners. This is what we sell here. This is the MPVI2. And of course that does mean the second generation. They only sell the second generation. Some of the older ones had a bigger box with a bunch of cables. They haven't offered it in about two and a half years now. So we're not gonna touch on that. We're only touching on these because this is the only thing that they sell. Now this is tuning software as well as the hardware you see in here with a cable. You really can't see it, but I can't open this up. They're sealed. I don't want to break the seal on a customer's product. But there is a cable down here to hook up to a laptop, and that's what this is for. You hook this up to your vehicle through an OBD2 port, you download their software with it, and you use a laptop to hook up to your vehicle to adjust things like timing tables and fuel trim, things like Maybe you're trying to delete the, the VAT system on a swap or you're doing a DOD delete and you gotta knock that off as well. That's where this can come in. These guys have been around for a long time. They're actually a really good group of guys that have worked very hard to really crack the codes on a lot of factory computers. It started out mostly with the domestics. This will do Ford, GM, and Dodge from the later 90s, early 2000s, and of course newer. But over the years, they've actually cracked a lot of vehicles. I believe they have Saab, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Porsche, Nissan, and even as of recently, in the past few years, I think they even got Toyota down a little bit, which is pretty nice for some of you guys that are having a hard time figuring out who to go to for Toyota stuff. So you got a newer Toyota, you can use this stuff too. So really good software, really versatile. And first we're gonna to explain to you kind of how it works. See, you buy the software from us here with the MPV i2 unit. And of course it does include this and it includes credits. We sell them starting out at two credits and then you can add more credits as needed. And let me explain that. That might be part of the confusion. That might be why you're watching this video right now. You use the credits to license a computer. And I do mean that. I do mean an actual PCM, an actual engine computer or transmission computer, whatever you're trying to tune or make adjustments to. That is what you're using credits to connect to. You're not unlocking all Corvettes. You're literally unlocking one vehicle and it's not by the VIN number. It's actually linked to the serial number inside of this computer. So maybe that'll help answer some questions there. You are actually pairing this unit here to this computer and you use the credits to unlock it. Now, once you unlock it, you have this unit here paired to this computer here for life. So as many times as you need to get back into this particular computer to make adjustments or tune it, you're set. You already paid, for instance, GM, it starts out as two credits for most vehicles. Some of the newer ones are getting more and more expensive. They're four, six credits, eight credits. I think some of the Dodge ones are you know, getting up to eight to 10 credits. Some of the foreign vehicles, of course, are about eight to 10 credits as well to get in and crack them. But once you crack it that one time, you're in it, you're in it for life. This is paired to this. So you do not have to rebuy them every time you need back in. <clears throat> You do have to rebuy them if you're getting into another computer. Yes, if you have, say, an 07 to 13 Silverado, you pay your credits, you crack into it, you do your DOD delete, you do you know, some tuning and some stuff like that, and all of a sudden your buddy goes, hey, can you tune mine? Yeah, no problem. You have to pay to unlock his computer too. You can't, just because you already did one doesn't mean you got all of them. You have to go vehicle by vehicle. But again, once you unlock his, this is constantly paired to this, so you can always get back into it to make readjustments, whether it be months or years down the line, it's always paired to it. <clears throat> so maybe that'll help kind of understand what the credits are for and why you're using them. Also, 
If you're wanting to know how many credits a vehicle takes or what vehicles are supported by HB tuners, we're going to list a, uh, a link in the, in the uh, description here on YouTube that has a list on HB tuners website that tells you what vehicles can be paired with this and how many credits it takes to unlock them that one time. So no worries there, it's really easy to figure out. <clears throat> Another question we get, where are the, where are the credits stored? Is, is it in your laptop that you use? Is it in the computer itself? It is actually inside of this unit itself. So this goes with you. These do have a serial number on the back. That's your serial number to use. So when you buy more credits online, they're paired to the serial number. So you take it with you to go tune, whether it be your vehicle, your dad's vehicle, your brother's vehicle, whatever, that's where they're stored. So maybe that's another question you had. Hopefully that answered that one too. <clears throat> now, like I said, we're not gonna be talking about the tuning because truth be told, a common misconception is we do tuning here at Scog and Dickey. We do not. Uh, unfortunately, while we all wish we were really good tuners, that is a very specialized skill and talent and experience that we just do not possess. So we do not offer it as a service, and we certainly don't do it ourselves, but we do offer the products to do it, and we do know a little bit about it to at least help you get a leg up getting started. If you're wanting to learn about tuning, when you purchase your HP Tuners MPVI2, we also offer the tuning school. Now you saw me probably talk about this during our holiday video. I hope you watched our holiday video. We always try to talk about some good ideas and some good sales. <clears throat> Otherwise you probably have a family member that's upset because you didn't buy them all the Corvette accessories they wanted. But we do have the tuning school books here. For instance, this is the GM beginner's guide. The first one you would buy if you're doing say GM stuff. A big thing we do here is GM, but we keep a lot of them. They make them for Ford, they make them for Dodge. And of course they do make, we got one here. I stole off of a friend's desk. <laughs> this is the advanced booklet when you're starting to get into much more advanced stuff, when you're getting into things like, um, you know, boost or, you know, flex fuel tuning, stuff like that. That's where this book will come in handy. And of course they make them for quite a bit of topics. They make them for transmission specifics for certain vehicles. A lot of these new eight speeds and 10 speeds it's a little more trickier to tune them, especially for the higher horsepower stuff. So they make booklets specific for that. The good thing about the tuning school is not only are they some of the more knowledgeable guys when it comes to I'm wanting to learn this and I don't have somewhere to go local to learn it, these booklets and this team have everything you need. They also have a great YouTube series, just like we do here. We do little tech videos, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes long. They do the same thing. They talk about all sorts of little topics. They can answer a lot of questions. They're really helpful. When you buy the Tuning School booklets from us, <clears throat> one of the benefits is you're not just stuck thumbing through this book trying to figure something out. Sometimes this, sometimes this stuff can be a little daunting. It can be a bit much to take in. If you're anything like me, you maybe we're kind of a, a C plus student, not exactly an A plus student. So sometimes reading stuff by the book and learning it right off the bat isn't your cup of tea and it isn't mine either. So that's where the tuning school comes in handy. If you have proof of purchase that you've bought some of these books from us and you're learning and you are trying, you can call and they can help you along the way. They can't teach you from scratch, but if you're learning and you're trying to figure out what's going on here and something isn't working, something isn't connecting, you can't figure out what's going on, they do have a great tech line that can help you along the way. And they really are a great stepping stone to learning how to do this, especially for you guys that are looking to do this, not only for your personal vehicles, but maybe you're trying to kind of do this a bit as a bit of a career, a bit of a side, you know, a side hustle. Because some tuners, if they get really good at it, can make really good money doing this. So that is an opportunity here. <clears throat> now we also get questions back to the HP Tuners unit itself. The differences between standard and pro. That's kind of a big one. The pro version takes the standard unit and it adds the ability to data log a wideband O2 sensor along with it that you can actually see on the screen and data log it as you're tuning. For advanced tuners, it's a big deal. If you're just starting out, you don't have to get this kind of feature right away. You can just kind of 
dip your toes in the pool, as they say, you know, get a feel for it and buy the standard version because the pro version is always something you can do to upgrade later on. You can take your standard, you can have it upgraded to the pro. And the cost difference is the same, so it's not like a big savings buying it all now. You want to do pro a year down the line because you got pretty good at this, you're thinking, wow, I can really use this you know, extra feature. You can definitely add it on, and it is a useful feature for advanced tuning. Big deal. What we offer on the side, and that's probably what you're looking at on our website right now, is we have the HP tuners paired with one of our wideband O2 sensors. Now, these are separate systems. You wire in the wideband O2 here, the gauge and the harness from either AM or NGK. We give you a few options just because people like to have some choice. All of them do the same thing. They all hook up a wideband O2 and an O2 bung in your exhaust and hook up to this gauge here. While this cannot be paired to the standard version of HP tuners, it is something that while you're tuning, while you're driving down the road and you and maybe even a buddy have this laptop in your lap and you're trying to figure out where the air fuel ratios are, you can use this gauge. Most vehicles, I believe some of the more modern Fords come from the factory with a wideband O2, so they might not need this. But most GMs, most Dodges, most foreign vehicles, they come with a standard narrow band O2 sensor, so they won't tell you a very specific air fuel ratio. They'll just tell you if you're too rich, too lean. They won't give you the specific number like this thing. That makes it harder to tune. It takes a longer time to figure out how much you're needing to add and take away on a fuel table and when you have all these little data points that you're trying to adjust, trying to do it, I'm not going to say blind, but kind of blind, can take a little bit longer, become a little more frustrating, a little bit harder to learn. So it is a good investment to do that. And if you do get the wideband O2 sensor, even though it's separate, and you do get the HP tuner standard, and like I said, you go to the Pro, you already have the sensor, you already have the gauge, you can wire that up to the Pro version and finally start data logging it like you, like a pro. <laughs> These are all baby steps that we offer along the way. So I hope that I was able to answer some of your questions. I know this stuff is pretty extreme. If you're like me, you grew up, um, you know, working on carbureted stuff and I, I worked on trucks and motorcycles. So yeah, cracking into one of these and tuning it is a bit above my head, just like I'm sure it is above yours. And that's why you're watching this video. But I'm, I hope we can answer some questions here. This stuff every year is getting easier and easier to do, easier and easier to learn. And it's really becoming a great feature to be able to crack into a computer and adjust every little thing and make it run perfect, especially when you're doing stuff like nitrous, turbos, superchargers, cams, or swaps into classic cars and you got to take all these, you know, emissions features off because you're putting it in like a 67 Chevelle wagon or something like that. Wagon. So, once again, we really appreciate you guys stopping by for one of our tech videos. Thank you for joining us for another year. We have a lot of big plans and a lot of great tech videos and projects to show you. Of course, please give us a like, subscribe, and a share on both Facebook and YouTube. We're trying to spread as much of this information as possible to help all of our customers and hot rodders alike. Stay tuned. We've got more coming next week. We've got some big plans for this year. Thanks.